Good. With that behind us, uh, we have much to do still here at KGOA 10. This is the Mark Thompson Show. I'm Mark. It's Brett. Fresh Face producer Albert. Jason's here for Chris. And on Fridays, a man who does his column for the Marina Times. Mm-hmm. He comes here and talks about movies and television and music. He is called the Culture Blaster on social media. And he arrives on a rainbow. Magic. Michael Snyder, welcome to the mix, Michael. Hey there, Michael. Hi, Brett, and uh, um, hey, Albert, and hello, Mark. I'm so glad to be back. I just feel like I've I've had a, a break, and it's been refreshing. And uh, yeah, I still want to see crappy movies in the uh, two two week interim. <laughs> oh yeah, we weren't here last Friday. You're saying last Friday you weren't here? Yeah, I, I forgot yeah, about that. No, yeah. it's okay. I didn't forget about it. I had to sit through Jungle Cruise. But in any event, <laughs> um, you know, look. Hey, wasn't that the number one movie or something? Uh, yeah, well, there's no accounting for taste, even mine. But in any event, um, you know, I've been I've been kind of freaked out about the Delta variant. But, you know, there is no vaccine for stupidity. And if there was, you know who wouldn't get one. And they're out there. And, I, you know, I was waiting for some evangelical Christians to uh, point out that Jesus wasn't vaccinated, but he turned out OK. And sure enough. Online, I see somebody wearing a T-shirt that says Jesus wasn't vaccinated. Hey, hey, he could heal the sick, dummy. Of course he wasn't <laughs> vaccinated. What is wrong with If you? anybody didn't need the vaccine, it was Jesus, is your point. Exactly. Yeah. But the rest right. of us, get your And this get is your... their new hope. Yeah, all right, all right, exactly. Get your vaccines, people. All right. Uh, what do you say? You want the movies? Yeah, well, that's really why you're here, although yeah. I appreciate your vaccine thoughts. Okay. Well, I well, thought that was a good thought about Jesus not needing it. Yeah. So I really, uh, don't get me wrong, I think you're very strong to this point, but really you're here for the movies. Okay, I'm, I'm <laughs> okay. sorry about Maybe. that. I'll get down yeah. to business. And, and TV, if we can get to it, The Suicide Squad with a the, so as uh, to not confuse it with David Ayer's 2016 movie Suicide Squad, is a new film that's about the same comic book property with some of the same characters. If you're confused, let me try to explain. Despite in some ways being a sequel to Ayer's lumbering and dull Suicide Squad movie, yeah, it's based on the same DC Comics source material and features a few of the same actors in the same roles. This works much better as a fast-paced, action-filled, darkly humorous, and here's a warning, cheerfully violent standalone and and you can uh, say thanks to the skills of screenwriter director James Gunn, uh, who wrote and directed this. He's the man behind the competitor Marvel's wildly entertaining, funny, and occasionally touching Guardians of the Galaxy movies, as well as some real hilarious genre picks, starting with the um, uh, alien invasion movie Slither. But this is so much better than the Ayers movie. Uh, oh, the plot. Yeah, the plot such as it is. We get a new mission for the American Black Ops Unit Task Force X, known informally as the Suicide Squad, because its super criminal and anti-heroic members are considered expendable. Thus, you know, if they go on these missions, they could be killed, uh, probably at the hands of uh, Amanda Waller, who is the head of this clandestine division, and she's played, as in the first Suicide Squad movie, by uh, Viola Davis. Uh, uh, You know, Waller sends these convicted charges out with micro bombs implanted in their heads in case anyone is stupid enough to try and desert. Okay. The deal she offers them is that if they fulfill their mission, their sentence is reduced. And if they die, eh, you know, they die. Uh, Overseeing the miscreants, (laughs) uh, overseeing these guys is Waller's field commander, uh, a career military man named Rick Flagg, played as in the first Suicide Squad movie by Joel Kinnaman. Other returnees from the Ayers dud are Jay Courtney as Aussie jerk Captain Boomerang, and in her very best go-round as the character, Margot Robbie as the Joker's ex-mall Harley Quinn. And the new squaddies include King Shark, a giant walking, talking shark, voiced by... Sylvester Stallone. Oh. And instead of Will Smith's Deadshot character from the 2016 film, we get Bloodsport, an assassin played by Idris Elba. They're all tasked with destroying a super weapon being developed in the militaristic Latin American island nation of Corto Maltese. But the weapon is even more deadly and bizarre than they expect. And speaking of the unexpected, Gunn's movie, in addition to being explosive and kinetic and often funny, is also a dig at American intervention. 
and geopolitical shenanigans. So the cast playing the new squad members include uh, welcome alumni from previous gun movies, Nathan Fillion, Michael Rooker, and Sean Gunn, plus John Cena, who is terrific as the supposedly patriotic, peace-at-all-costs killer, peacemaker, and former Doctor Who star Peter, Capel, uh, Peter Capaldi as the neuron-enhanced thinker. And you even get SNL's Pete Davidson. And when I saw Davidson, I was like, come on, Waller, trigger the bomb. Quick, trigger the bomb. Not, not that, that Pete's that <laughs> terrible. No. Anyway, I love Pete in The King of Staten Island. I like to Hang on a second, though. Uh, Cena it seems like one of those guys who is doing the rock thing successfully. He's gone from wrestling. Right. Albert, you know this. You're a, he's a wrestling fan. He seems to have successfully made the run yeah. into acting. He's like Little Rock. Yeah, me. like Little Rock. Thank no, you. He, he anyway, does well. And guess what? I don't want to you know, spill the beans. Maybe it's a prequel. Maybe it's a sequel. But HBO Max is prepping James Gunn's Peacemaker miniseries starring John Cena. So maybe he survives the Suicide Squad. Maybe not. Anyway, this is the funniest DC superhero movie after Shazam and the most graphically grisly. Then again, come on, it's based on comic books about cannon fodder, and James <laughs> Gunn made it. What do you expect? It's in theaters and streaming on HBO Max. So I get the end of all of that. I get that you sort of liked it. I, I totally enjoyed it. It's just yeah. I'm trying to put a warning there for people of, you know, a uh, weaker constitution than me that aren't going to like, you know, the potential for someone's head to get blown off. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Graphically. <laughs> on screen. Okay, noted. Okay. So Ooh. noted. Moving okay. on. Uh, Annette is a remarkable, strange, often dazzling, and very modern movie operetta about love, art, fame, and the perils of marriage and parenting. It's not going to be to everyone's taste like the music of its screenwriters and composers, Ron and Russell Mayle, of the long-running decidedly eclectic pop rock band Sparks, whose career was the subject of the uh, recent documentary, The Sparks Brothers. But when Annette isn't confounding, it is, it's dazzling. I mean, it won Best Director for idiosyncratic French director Leos Carax at Cannes last month. And as far as I'm concerned, he deserved every accolade, as do the Male Brothers and the movie's main three stars. Mm. You got Adam Driver as angry, self-loathing comedian Henry, who appears to be channeling Sam Kinison, Bobcat Goldthwait, and Andy Kaufman on stage. Marianne Cotillard as world-renowned opera singer Anne, who falls for the comedian as he does for her. And Simon Helberg from The Big Bang Theory as the opera singer's accompanist turned conductor, who is kind of enmeshed in their fate when Henry and Anne have a daughter together. And that child, named Annette, is gifted and the way her gifts manifest and the way she's depicted in the movie are among the delights and maybe disturbing surprises of the film. I was transfixed from the opening number. Uh, it's a piece called So May We Start, which introduces the cast and the musicians in an ensemble performance that's one long tracking shot through the streets of what may or may not be uh, the film's Los Angeles setting. Uh, yeah, same setting as La La Land, but I was far more enamored uh, by the unique and challenging nature of Annette than I was for the other uh, recent musical set in L.A. Uh, some people might not get it. They may find the music's use of neoclassical minimalism, like a recent passion of the Sparks guys, to be off-putting. They may have Driver's character uh, kind of upsetting them or the way Baby Annette is realized on screen. But for those who get it, Annette is a very special movie. And here's a little sideline. Years ago, Ron and Russell were slated to appear in what would have been the great French comedian and filmmaker Jacques Tati's final movie, but he became ill and passed away before they could make the project. And now they've teamed up with another French filmmaker to create a movie that actually recalls another Jacques, Jacques Demy, whose uh, candy-colored musicals The Umbrellas of Cherbourg and The Young Girls of Rochefort also replace dialogue with song lyrics, just like La La Land as well. Um, in theaters now uh, and streaming via Amazon Prime Video on August 20th, Annette, incredibly unique, and um, I, I loved it. Yeah, you really loved it. It sounds to me, though, that if I can just say it, has, it has a very specific audience person who would love it like you loved it. Perhaps. Uh, I, and, you know, maybe you know you don't know Sparks or you, you're not put off by the film. Uh, powerful performances by Adam Driver um, and uh, Marianne Cotillard. Uh, and Simon Helberg, they're they're all really wonderful in this. Wow, terrific, yeah. And by the way, just because you mentioned it, I saw that Sparks movie that you recommended. Wow, it is terrific. It's just what you said it was, really great. The Sparks Brothers. Sparks Brothers, yeah. Fascinating. If you don't know about these guys, it's just a great story. No, I didn't know about them, and I loved it. Yeah, so go well, ahead. 
Um, John and the Hole is a very unsettling psychological thriller from Spanish director Pascal Sisto and the director of Birdman, Nicholas Giacobone, who based it on a short story. And don't worry about subtitles. It's in English. But you may worry about how creepy it is. Okay, imagine if a coming-of-age movie was influenced by The Collector and the Bad Seed. Well, you don't have to imagine it. It's John and the Hole, which observes a well-to-do family played by Michael C. Hall and Jennifer L. as mom and dad, and Tessa Farmiga as their college-age uh, daughter, and newcomer Charlie Shotwell as their 13-year-old son, John, who has mm, issues. It's not a great movie, <laughs> but, but I found it disturbing in a good and riveting way. It's in theaters and also available for streaming on most digital rental services, including Amazon Prime, Apple TV, Voodoo, and Google Play. That's called John and the Hole. Okay, Michael, we're really out of time. Do oh. we? Uh, do you, give me your, your, you, you didn't love Jungle the Cruise? You clearly no, made, a no, couple, Jungle, look, they, you they, made a couple of cheeky remarks, well, as they, these critics often right, do. Right, they sort of tried to make a movie that would, you know, be kind of, first off, it's Disney using their IP and making a movie based on a ride in Disneyland. What's next? Disneyland, the trash can? I mean, <laughs> oh, we're going to do something about these trash receptacles. How dare you? We'll in, all in, be in, working for Disney soon. Adventureland. But they said, okay, we have to have uh, a Jungle Cruise. We're going to make it kind of like the African Queen, only, you know, it's not. Because you don't have Humphrey Bogart and you don't have... Uh, Catherine Hepburn. Instead, you have The Rock. Oh, yeah. That's, that's well, you know level. what? I got this. Why don't you just text from it? From the text line at 415-888-10 on the 925. Shout out to the 925. <laughs> Jungle Cruise was a decent action adventure movie, Michael. Nobody expected The Godfather. Well, but if you expected the African Queen, uh, it sunk. <laughs> oh, wait, did I say sunk? I, I meant stunk. No, okay. Okay, Look, there we go. Emily uh, Blunt. Here's a serious that. question, though, for uh, somebody else, and then we got to wrap up. From the 925, I see the new trailers for Suicide Squad with the director giving talking points. Please ask Michael if this is a new trend. Uh, you know, it's so strange. I saw a screening of Respect, uh, which is the upcoming uh, biopic about Aretha Franklin, uh, starring Jennifer Hudson, and it was preceded by a little mini-doc uh, of her being interviewed about the, the situation. I don't know whether this is a new trend, but it's got to stop. It's got to stop. I don't want previews. I don't want advertisements. I don't want mini-documents. Give me the movie, buddy. Yeah, The Suicide Squad, you uh, liked it. There's a lot to like there, you said. Annette, you uh, really uh, you really liked it. I did. You really, you, I thought it, was, it sounded like it was a very specific person who has to see it and love it as much as you did. John in the Hole, you thought, man, there's a creep factor there, but... Uh, yeah, kind, mm. of, kind of mad. You know, uh, it, it's funny. Mad. It's funny. We we got plenty of stuff, but, you know... I'm sorry that our time is so limited. Well, you you can read, Michael, in the commuter, uh, the coastal commuter column that he does in the Marina Times at marinatimes.com, and also you can pick it up on newsstands. You can also follow him on social media. He's called the Culture Blaster, so it's at culture blaster on twitter and on youtube and other uh, uh forums and michael you're so generous to come here every week we really love uh, hanging out with you so thank you thanks michael and, and michael leaves as he arrives